Hi folks, Roller Martin here and you're watching Western Bass TV. Hi everybody, I'm Mal Linder and you're here watching Western Bass TV. Hi, I'm Kevin Martin and I'm a Triton Pro staff member and today we're out on Lake uh, Di Diamond Valley Reservoir and today I'm going to do a little fishing and uh, what you can expect on a day like today is some pretty good drop shot fish and uh, some pretty good Cinco and Ica fish. It's, it's really turning on now. The fish are moving up shallow. There's a lot of females moving up onto the beds. There's already a lot of males already on the bed and they're very aggressive and very easy to catch. So we'll just go ahead and uh, fish along the bank here and see what we can get. Year around the drop shot usually is a pretty reliable technique on this lake. During the winter the fish hang out really deep and sometimes you're catching them deeper than 100 feet of water on the drop shot. But this time of year, springtime, fish are moving up. You can catch them out on the, on the point staging or in these shallow flats like this back into the cuts where you have little rock piles and, and bush lines. And Dragging a Carolina rig out of the back of the boat is a real good time, real good idea for this time of year also. Casting out to deep water and dragging uphill can be a real good method for catching big females that are getting ready to move up into these shallow bushes and little cuts. You just want to cast into these coves like this and just let it sink down into the deep depths. I think I'm bit there. Oh, got him. Oh, this feels pretty good. Yeah, this is a good one. All right. It's taking me around the trunk. Whoa. He's a good fighter. Here he comes. Ah. All right, there we go. Got him, that's a good one. That's definitely a female moving up back into these coves to spawn. You can see she's already had, has a big belly from the eggs. She just loved that Senko. She just ate that sucker up. Wow, that's a good one. If you want to catch bass like these, come to Diamond Valley Reservoir, any of the San Diego lakes, and come out fishing with Cameron Smith or me, Kevin Martin, and we'll put you on some great fish like this. Whether it be drop shotting, Cinco's, Ica's, Carolina rigging, whatever it may be, swim baits. We'll put you on quality fish like this. Get some great pictures and great, take them home and put them up on your wall and maybe have the possibility of even catching a fish over 10 pounds. So come on out to the to Diamond Valley, come out, out to A Marine and hook up with uh, me, me or Cameron and we'll take you out and put you on some big fish like this. They're just waiting out there. They're nice and healthy, hard fighting fish. We'll go ahead and release this guy and let him get bigger for when the next time we come out here. And there he goes. Off to get bigger another day.
Hi, I'm JT, uh, sales manager at AIM Marine. Uh, here we sell Triton, Skeeter, G3, and Wellcraft boats. Uh, we power them by Mercury and Yamaha outboards. And we carry a full line of boats from everything from a 12-foot aluminum boat all the way up to a 39-foot saltwater boat, everything in, be in between. Full line of bass boats, aluminum boats, and pontoon boats. This here is our Triton TR196. Uh, it's a 19 and a half foot bass boat, a real popular model for us here. Uh, we power it usually with a 200 horsepower Mercury Optimax. Uh, it is available with the new 200 horsepower Mercury Verado as well. Um, real quick, I'll walk you through the boat, kind of nose to front, let you take a quick look at it. On this particular boat, we have a Motor Guide 82 pound digital trolling motor. That's the biggest 24 volt trolling motor that is available. Um, you can also put a 109 if you wanted to go to a 36 volt trolling motor. Um, back here is your rod locker has the rod storage rack built in it will take up to an eight foot rod and you have a, a capability of putting an eight foot rod in that side as well this one does have the rack built in all the way back here it does come single uh, it does come standard on a single axle trailer we upgrade most of them to a tandem axle trailer some guys putting a boat into a garage would like a single because it's a little easier to move around but the tandem does tow a little better a um, few new features that Triton's came out with this year for uh, they started in 04 but the 05's do have it as well is this new safety uh, boarding ladder comes right out of the, the boat just like that they call it their rescue boarding ladder it's a new innovative feature that they've came out with um, basically it allows you to get back into the boat I don't know I mean a bass boat is very difficult to get into once you're into the water um, very sturdy and it stores away just like that slides right back up in there and you can hardly tell it's there um, also these boats all come with a six inch manual jack plate ratcheting tie downs hydraulic steering on this model makes the engine very easy to turn at high speeds in the in here you got your storage compartment with all the batteries onboard battery charger bilge pump everything's in there your oil tank couple of these uh, trays that just drop in good to store your extension cord in for uh, charging your batteries or whatever you want or maybe a call kit or something I'll go ahead and hop up in the boat and show you a few more features inside the boat now another new feature that Triton has done for the past year or two is they've recessed the trolling motor pedal and I think they've done an excellent job of this here what they've actually done is it's molded into the hull instead of being an afterthought or something where they just cut the deck and recess it Triton actually has it fiberglass and molded into the hull and also there's a drain in case you ever get any water up in there it will actually go into your bilge instead of uh, just soaking the carpet and letting water sit in up there it's a nice feature these two right here are your main ones for your tackle storage this first one right here just a nice open big compartment dry storage you can slide tackle rain gear whatever you want and it goes quite a ways up this one right here is all slotted for the Plano 3700 tackle boxes you just pull them right out all your 3700s are right here as well as the back compartments are slotted for the 3700s right here's your measuring board that'll slide out in case you need to measure a fish um, nice little feature good place to keep it out of the way before we had talked about your rod lockers those are right here and then here's your cooler it also acts as a step up to the front deck um, real basic nice tray that sits in here in case you want to keep your sandwiches right here keep them out of the ice and then the cooler is a nice deep cooler that has no problem holding a 12 pack of sodas or water or whatever you want this boat here is a single console these are available on a dual console as well um, console you got all your gauges right here in front of you easy to see nice thing about the Triton you can flush mount an X125 no problem uh, a few other models you can flush mount would be the X135, the X102 color, LMS 330. Um, gives you a nice capability of flush mounting that, and you can, uh, it's a little more theft proof. No one can take your unit as easily. Uh, trim on the helm right here. It allows you with the hot foot to keep both hands on the wheel at all times. You have the trim on the helm, hot foot, and uh, so all that is is forward and reverse over there now. Um, these are the new SAS spring-loaded seats from Triton. It's a, basically a spring system that sits under the seats and allows it to absorb some shock when you're in rough water. 
Triton has also located their fuel tank underneath the seat. That way it has moved forward in the boat and it, it keeps the boat nice and stable, helps the boat plane quicker. Um, and then I'll also show you the live wells here. There are the Triton live wells. Triton really has great live wells. Uh, they're nice and deep, nice and dark, keep your bass as calm as possible. Um, and then their pump systems are uh, really, really good too. Basically you have two fill pumps, you have two recirc pumps and two pump out pumps. So you actually have a total of six pumps in your live well with a built in timer. All those switches are right here. And they do have the optional push button switches as well. Uh, some anglers prefer just the turn switch or the toggle switch. A little bit more user friendly. Um, and these back two compartments on this boat. Drop in tray again. This one has inserts for your pork jars and you can lay whatever else you'd like here or you can just leave it out of the boat completely. These are also slotted for the Plano 3700 tackle boxes. It's nice for your back seater if you're fishing a pro-am. You can just drop his boxes in there in the morning and you're ready to go. Lit compartments all the way around for fishing a night tournament or something. And that's really about it. This is the TR196. Um, one of our more popular models. The boat should run you know, in the mid to low 70s on GPS. A uh, very stable fishing platform. You can see how wide the front deck is and uh, makes it a great seller. Okay, the next boat we're going to talk about here is the Skeeter ZX225. This is Skeeter's 20, it's 20 feet 2 inches. It's their 20 footer. It's rated for a 225 horsepower. The engine we generally put on it is a 225 Yamaha HPDI. That's their direct injected engine. I'll just start up here at the front again and kind of go through it with you. As far as trolling motors, again, you can put a 24 or 36 volt trolling motor on this boat. This particular one has a Minn Kota 101. Um, flush mount capabilities, again, up in the front right here for a Lawrence X125 or a 135. Um, as you walk back here, rod locker again. You can fit an 8 foot rod in the rod locker. You can kind of see their storage system, how they utilize the most space possible. This boat here is a dual console, available in single or dual console. Okay, as we work our way back here, one of the things you'll notice on the Skeeters are these two sponsons on the back end. A lot of people have never really understood what they're for. Basically, what the sponson is for, I kind of relate it to the, a wheelie bar on a drag car. As, a, as, a, as the bow of the boat wants to come up, water is going to hit the, the bottom of the sponson and want to push the nose back down. It helps increase the speed of the whole shot. And at the same time, when you're coming off plane, it helps with the water coming over the back of the transom. You'll have almost no backwash with this boat. It also, these are foam filled and it makes the boat sit very level while you're fishing. It's a nice level fishing platform as opposed to a boat that might be a little higher in the bow. Also, again, it was like a stabilizer. It really helps the boat be a nice stable fishing platform as well as a level platform. So really they do a lot for the skiers and you've seen a few other boat companies start to come up with something like a sponsor but no one has quite came up with something like this. Also this boat here is on a 12 inch jack plate and the nice thing that Skeeter has done is this is a standard jack plate on all their ZX and TZX series boats. This jack plate is actually bolted into the stringer system. There are two aluminum pieces of uh, actually aluminum that go in and meet the stringer system. Really it's called their torque transfer system. Makes for a very, very strong and stable boat while you're up and running and uh, absorbs a lot of the shock when you're in rough water. Hydraulic steering is standard on this boat. It's almost a necessity with a 225 horsepower engine on it. Yamaha has put a nose cone and a high performance gear case on their 225 HPDIs. Standard on all these Skeeter Bass boats. Basically that allows us to run the engine up a little bit higher, still get water pressure at high speeds makes the boat a few miles an hour faster. Um, we'll go ahead and jump up inside the boat now and kind of go take a look at that. Real quick, we'll take a look in here first. This is uh, your storage compartment, tackle, accessories, whatever you'd like. There's dry storage. Uh, again, it's a lit compartment like all the other ones. This box here is slotted for the Plano 3700 tackle boxes. All, your, all, all 12 Plano 3700 tackle boxes fit in there nicely. This is again your rod locker, which we've already taken a look at. You can fit an 8-foot rod in there without a problem. This one here can also be used as a rod locker. Uh, it'll hold an 8-foot rod. Sometimes people will keep spinning rods over here or something. And another nice feature that the Skeeter has now is this line station. I, I personally, in mine, I keep my Carolina rig leader up, up here, and it gives me something to tie a new leader onto. 
but you can also just use it for bulk spools and tying uh, or spooling up new line the night before a tournament or something. Nice little feature. Here, here, this here is your day box right here. Basically, what this is just anything you're constantly getting into. Maybe you know your hot worm or something. You know, have a few bags right in there. Just something so it's easy to get to. You don't have to go digging into your box every time, looking for the worm you're fishing. Right here is a cooler, and this cooler also acts as somewhat as a step up to the front deck. Fairly deep cooler, plenty of space with a drain that goes into the bilge. Skeeter also uses the under seat uh, area for storage. Start right here. This one is also insulated for a cooler, so you actually have two coolers in this boat. Um, it's nice for a hot day, or you can use one as a trash can or whatever you'd like, but this one is insulated as well. This seat right here folds forward, and you can use this as a step to the back deck uh, so you don't wreck your upholstery, and at the same time, it gives your passenger while you're running an extra handle to hold on to. So he has these two handles over here to hold on to, and uh, this handle as well. Makes your passenger feel a little more safe in the boat. And then just storage over here as well for whatever you'd like. As far as the dash goes, um, all your gauges, uh, standard, RPM, your speedometer, fuel gauge, trim, water pressure, and a volt gauge. Uh, Skeeter has done something nice, which I personally like, and they've still left the digital flasher in here. A lot of people think these flashers are outdated or whatever, but I just like it because I always have my surface temp reading right on it. It has a built-in temp gauge, and then I still have an X15 or a nice unit mounted over here for uh, the fish finder. Right here, instead of toggle switches, switches Skeeter has gone to a push-button dash. Uh, a lot, you've seen a lot of boats go to it. Skeeters is nice. Everything is just very simple. Just push it once, twice, three times, and everything's off. Um, live well controls are still down there. Um, and the tilt wheel and the, uh, the pro trim is standard. The tilt wheel, if you need to get help getting in or out, you can move the wheel up and down. And then this boat's equipped with the hot foot as well. Move over to the back deck here. <coughs> Just uh, dry storage for your back seater here. All, alumi all aluminum. Nice sturdy storage compartment. Here are your live wells. Go ahead and open them both up for you. You can kind of take a look. They're ni nice, good size live wells. I believe they're about 40 gallons total. This one is equipped with the OxyMax system. Basically, what the OxyMax system is, is it's an air crystal on the back that separates the hydrogen and the oxygen out of the water lets the hydrogen you'll see bubbles floating to the surface and it keeps more oxygen in the water so and it's a nice feature and there's no on off switch for it or anything as soon as water hits it it is activated in the rigging compartment here you have it's two doors to get into the rigging compartment all your batteries go back here as well as your fuel tanks they've kept the fuel tanks on the outside of the boat again making it as stable as possible um, four batteries in this boat since it has a 36 volt trolling motor and a four bank charger. That's pretty much about it on the ZX225. Um, again, they make this boat in a ZX225, a ZX250, and a ZX300. Uh, the 250 being 21 feet and the uh, ZX300 being 21 feet 11 inches. Okay, this here is our G3 uh, Eagle 175. G3 is our primary aluminum company that we deal with. Uh, this is their Eagle 175. It's a 17 and a half footer um, with a lot of features for a 17 and a half footer. I'll kind of walk you through it real quick. Standard on this boat is a uh, uh, Minn Kota 40 pound thrust trolling motor. It's a 12 volt trolling motor. Um, up front you also have a trim switch to control your engine in the back. And this boat we power usually with a 50 horse Yamaha four stroke. Pushes the boat right at about 30 miles an hour, which is good for most anglers. You can put up to a 90 on it. The max horsepower rate on the boat is 90. But again, 50 helps keep the price down and gets great fuel mileage and everything. Should last you a long time. Uh, next thing I'll talk about real quick is this is an all welded boat. There's no rivets in this boat. Offers you a lifetime hull warranty on any structural part of the hull. Um, you can just see the quality of their welds. That's very difficult to weld aluminum, but G3 has some of the best welders in the industry. First storage compartments right here. Open it up. Plenty of room for tackle boxes as well as a couple of Plano 3600s that come with the boat that drop in right there. Move on over right here. This is your rod locker on this boat. Built-in rod rack and this rod locker will actually take a seven-foot rod 
uh, which is a nice feature for a 17 and a half foot boat. And then right here is an, another identical storage compartment to that one right there. Plenty of tackle storage and two Plano 3600s that come included in the boat. Take a look at the dash. Still get all your gauges, fuel gauge, tack, speedometer, and a trim gauge. Um, all your switches right here. Now, another nice feature about this boat is it comes with a uh, automatic uh, live well timer on the uh, live well, something you won't find in a lot of 17-foot boats. Garmin 85 Fish Finder comes standard. It mounts right there. That is a standard feature in this boat. And then you move it underneath the seat with some storage. Tackle storage or just any dry storage that you want goes right there. Underneath this one is an insulated cooler with a drain. Move right here and this is a nice size live well for this boat. You won't find a live well that size for most 17 and a half footers and it is divided. And then in the back the last compartment is your rigging compartment where your batteries and everything go. Fuel tank and your two batteries. Okay, this here is the Wellcraft. Uh, this is our primary saltwater line. This is their uh, 212 Fisherman. It's their 21 foot center console. Um, start up here at the front. You got a nice size storage compartment right up here. Take a look at that. Plenty of storage. Right here, this is used as their fish hold. Um, it's all insulated. If you keep ice in there on your fish, it will keep the ice as long as possible with a drain that goes out into the bilge. A couple of cup holders up here, nice little feature just to keep the drink in there. Um, moving back to the console, this boat is equipped with the T-top, all welded stainless steel T-top with some nice canvas on it. It's a great T-top. You'll see these snaps right here. This is for an enclosure set. It's basically some icing glass that makes the console completely enclosed, keeps it real dry on a rough day. This is the console of the boat. All your gauges, you got water pressure, fuel gauge, trim gauge, a tack, and a spit speedometer. Um, tilt wheel on this boat is standard. Um, right here you'll see plenty of space to flush mount, whether it's a marine radio, uh, a GPS unit, fish finder, as well as it gives us plenty of space to mount it up here around the compass. You go up overhead here, you got a radio box. This will be the best place to put a radio, but some people do want it down here. Moving back here, here's the leaning post here. Um, all stainless steel hardware, a couple of cup holders and some rod holders, as well as underneath is a 72 quart uh, built-in cooler. Whether you have drinks, fish in there, whatever you'd like, it's built in. Um, back here, a couple of extra seating places for a while you're on the way out to the fish. They also double as a storage compartment underneath for all your rigging and batteries and everything. Right there. And take a look at this one too. Here's your bait well right here. Nice thing that Wellcraft has done is they've kept it real circular for your bait. Your bait's not run constantly running into the edges and uh, keeps a good flow of water in there. It's equipped with a light and a live well also. That way if you're going out in the dark, your bait isn't going to be running into each other all the time. There'll be that light on the bait and they can kind of stay calm in your live well as long as possible. Also one other feature on this boat is the wash down system. This, it is an optional feature but it's equipped on this boat. Wash down feature, you basically have a hose uh, screwed into there and you have a switch up on your dash to turn it on and off. It's a raw water wash down, it'll suck water out of the ocean and pump it in here so you can hose down your deck. One other nice feature that this uh, boat has that's something you don't get with most 21 footers is it has a built in porter potty underneath the console. You know, it's a little bit of space, enough to get in there and uh, use the porter potty, but uh, a lot, again, most 21 footers don't have that under there. Something nice that Wellcraft uh, came out with nicely if you needed to get the wife to go fishing with you. And then uh, this boat here we usually power with a 150 four stroke. This one has a 150 Yamaha four stroke on it with hydraulic steering. Great, great fuel economy on the engine. You're going to get cruising speed, you're going to get about three to three and a half miles per gallon out of this boat. And uh, it comes with a stainless steel prop as well. 
Up here on the T-top, you'll also notice there's four rod holders up here, rocket launchers, some people call them. Good place to keep big rods that are out of the way, and also a spreader light, which you can uh, aim at different angles, but it'll mainly uh, focus back here on the cockpit area. Right here underneath is a uh, storage area. This is a PFD storage generally, personal flotation devices. Keep your life vest, throw cushion, whatever you'd like up in there. Just a good area to keep things out of the way. Okay, that's a quick tour through all of the boats we sell. Again, we sell Skeeter and Triton bass boats, uh, G3 aluminum boats, and Wellcraft saltwater boats, all powered by Mercury's and Yamaha's, as well as a, we're a loose dealer for Mercury and Yamaha, which means we sell engines by themselves for guys repowering. Um, if you have any questions at all, you can contact me personally. Uh, our phone number is 619-443-0031. My name is JT, uh, or any other salesman that works here. And we're located at 12345 Maple View Street in Lakeside, California. Uh, we're right off the 67 freeway. Uh, you can actually see us from the freeway on Maple View. Um, but feel free to give us a call or stop by our showroom anytime. Good morning, everybody. My name is Mark Franco, and I work for A Marine Guide Service. I'm out here today at Diamond Valley Lake, and we are going to go fish on the new G3 PB20 Fishing Cruise. And this is a boat that I use out here at Diamond Valley Lake with my clients to help them catch trout. Hi, everybody. Back again. Uh, I just want to let you know we're going to be using a couple of techniques out today. One of my favorite techniques is basically, oh, like the old switch strike switch and take out <laughs> if you want to put it that way i like to use these little six foot tank cores here with these 100 cardos with four pound tests and what i'm doing here is using a nice bobber uh, it's got a rattle in it because when trout were raised they were raised in the ponds and when they fed them the feed went on top of the water and it basically sounded like brr, brr. and when this bobber comes through the water and it hits the water and starts moving with the waves it gives that same similar simulation sound so that's what I try to do try to bring them back to where they were born and what we do is like to put maybe about a four to five foot with a night crawler just dangling off the edge and we'll keep this about no more than 15 20 feet off the boat because what we're doing is we're basically using it as a strike indicator a lot of these trout are coming right up to these bobbers and just bowling on them just bowling it's crazy I hope we can get some today on TV but then what we do is behind it we'll come right back with these seven foot rods with these two pound tests and these tiny 132nd ounce Josh jigs and we'll fire in on these trout and man unbelievable so if we can get a strike going on to that the old bait and switch we're going to be trying today I hope we hope we get a chance to show it today for you okay we finally made it out to the spot here down at Diamond Valley Lake this spot has been very productive for me it's called the West Dam and basically what we're going to do is we're going to use our whole bait and switch as I was talking about earlier basically there's our night crawler we're going to put a little juice here which is legal here in the state of California <laughs> And it's made by Berkeley. It's called a power bait juice. And it's got a corn flavor. And they have seemed to really, really enjoy it. But like I said, this is our indicator rod. This is kind of to bring them in and make sure they can come real close to the, get them close to the boat. Because we're going to be firing jigs on these fish here. And we're just going to let that marinate for a few seconds here. Basically, what we're doing, we're just checking the wind, making sure our drift is going to be just right. And it looks like we're moving a little here from right to left. So we're going to turn around here and come right back up the line. And we should be in good shape here. Like I said, this is the spot we've been getting. Any one of these buoys, as you'll see through the camera as we go out through the day, there's a lot, a lot of trout. See, back in 1996, they stocked over 100,000 pounds of sub-catchables from 6 to 12 inches, which is just a, a fisherman's dream, especially if you're a trout fisherman like myself. I mean, those fish came in here, and they had fin fin shad, shiners, they had shad. I mean, it basically, they had a smorgasbord down here, plenty of food to eat, buffet, as you would say. Um, and that's all they've been eating these fish, these little subcatchables. And now these subcatchables are anywhere from three pounds to about six pounds is the biggest I've seen this year. And I'll tell you what, if we can get a sun today, you're going to see how big and beautiful they really are. These fish are just awesome. They're running, like I said, anywhere from three to five pounds, anywhere from about 20 to 25 inches long with a circumference here of 21 inches. And the pictorials, the adult fins, the back tail are just perfect. So, and this lake has looked like it hasn't been fished in about three or four days, so it's pretty good. It should be quiet out here. 
And what I like to do is when we're out here in the wind, we're very important that you have your boat structure set up really nice. I mean, you really want to keep your motor running sometimes because sometimes that motor runs, they like the sound of it. They'll come and look right up and they're like, what's this going through the water? Kind of kind of like, oh, like any kind of bass fisherman might use, they're using a crankbait or any kind of vibrating bait. Oh, making noise. And that's it. they're curious. They want to know what it is, so they'll come and look at it. And with our strike indicator and our bobber, with our little bit of scent we got going, hopefully that brings them in even closer. Hopefully we can see some boils on these fish. And I tell you what, I grew up fishing albacore, yellowtail, white sea bass, and I take a lot of those tricks out here in the water. You know, we'll troll sometimes for these trout, and then we'll stop back on them just like fishing for albacore. For, once you find one trout, you pretty much found them all, just like albacore. First, once you find one, the leader, the stud who takes that jig bite, you found them all. So we're going to just about there, guys. We're just about on the spot here. I'm going to turn the boat a little bit to the side. And like I said, we're going to keep the motor running, and we want to square, stay square with the dam when we're fishing here. I'm going to have to move in here real quick. Okay, and there we go. We're ready to go here. Let's see if we can get lucky. Here's our old bait switch pole. We're going to let this drift out a little bit here. We got a nice little, good, nice little wind drift. And basically, we're just going to sit this back out there and kind of let it do its own thing. Remember, the bobber is kind of jiggling around and it's moving real good. And now we're going to come back with our other stuff here, with our little two pound test. And we're going to make sure we've always got to keep the little marination going here. It helps, especially when you're just on the water real quick. And you always want to make sure your line's clear up here because you are dealing with light line and you don't have any problems. Because I tell you, once you get one of these fish on two pound test, it's pretty good. Like I said, you want to keep your boat square. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of back it up a little bit. I want this bobber right kind of this way. So we got a pretty good aim going right now. There we go. And what we're using today, like I said, we were using those 130 second ounce jigs, which are the little tiny Josh's jigs. And what we have here is a nice 7 foot G Loomis rod with a nice dial of 700 and 2 pound test. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's my, that's my drag. And that's about what we want it right there with these fish. Because when we set that hook, we want to make sure everything's there. We've got a nice configuration with the rod, with the reel, everything's set up real quick. So there we go. Ooh, we've got a nice little wind today, so let's see if we can back this up a little bit. We're still looking good, though. Hi, I'm Larry Henson with A Marine. I'm the retail sales manager. I uh, put together the retail shop here. And the big thing that we specialize in is a lot of the higher end bass tackle that correlates with the boats that we sell, Skeeter and Triton bass boats. Carry a lot of the high end bass reels. Uh, we carry Loomis rods. Uh, they have probably the largest selection of Loomis rods in Southern California. We carry over 120 SKUs of rods, or different models of rods, I should say. Carry a lot of high-end Japanese baits, specialty baits, uh, Vagabond, Mega Bass, Lucky Craft. Uh, we have probably the largest selection in Southern Cal on those baits. Carry a lot of specialty high-end uh, soft baits, hard baits, swim baits, just about anything the bass guy is looking for. That's the main thing we specialize in. Uh, there's a lot of other hard-to-find baits. We specialize in finding those baits also. Uh, that's the main thing that our store is based on is the, the hard to find tournament angler stuff. But we do carry from the entry level all the way up to the experienced angler. Okay, we also stock a full line of Lowrance Electronics and we're a motor guide authorized super center, which means that we not only sell motor guide trolling motors on the boats, sales, service, and we do all the warranty work for motor guide. So any motor guide or Lowrance questions that the customers have, we can handle all those for you also. My name is Cameron Smith. I'm a guide for AIM Marine out of Lakeside, California. Also a Skeeter national team member for the Western region. 
and I'm going to help you guys catch as many fish as possible. In order to do that, we're going to put the st latest state-of-the-art tackle in your hand, put you on the right spots where all the fish live, and teach you the techniques in which to catch them, whatever happens to be working best for that period of the year, we're going to put you on some fish. It's going to be up to you to set the hook and get them in the boat. That's all you got to do. Anxious to get out on the water and start helping people learn how to do it. Here comes the male. It's about four pounds. Three or four pounds. Man, that's just a big fish right there. No way. <laughs> Just the male, but sorry, I couldn't give you any warning. Were we? Yeah. That's good. That was fun. Do that again. Plump belly. I'm just going to put her back. It's my favorite swim bait of all time. This is an MS Slammer 12 inch model in the light trout color. Fish this bait on a steady to fast retrieve, waking it on the surface as fast as you can get away with it without it diving down below the surface. And the fish just love it. It throws a lot of water, makes a lot of commotion, brings them up from down in about 20 feet and they just come up and knock it really hard. Take it down and you reel into them and put them in the boat. About all there is to it. Get your head down.
And that's the result of my favorite bait. Can't resist it. Oh, there he is. Book a trip with us at A Marine. And I'll show you how to get them right there. At A Marine, we pride ourselves in customer service, and nothing shows that better than our service department. With all of our factory trained technicians, we service uh, all outboard manufacturers, which include Mercury, Yamaha, Evan Rudin Johnson, and Honda. And we do all authorized warranty work for these outboards as well. Not only do we service outboards, but we're also a Motor Guide Premier Super Center, which means we stock a large inventory of Motor Guide parts. We can turn them around in 24 hours. Uh, or we will loan you a trolling motor until we can repair yours. Our service department will also take care of any rigging you need to done to your boat, whether it's just installing electronics, putting in a battery charger, changing out new batteries for the new season, or just general maintenance. See, this is where I need my trolling motor. <laughs> Get it going. Okay, come on Trout, I know we're here. Okay folks, here we are, we're using our 6 foot 6 G limits here with our 700 dial whisker with our 2 pound test and our Josh jig. We just had a nice little chaser come up, see if we can get him to come back for it. What we want to do here is we want to just really slowly work this jig. Just kind of slowly bring it through. Just kind of make it dance, make it dance, make it dance. Basically, you want to make that jig make motions up and down like that. No, oh, he didn't fall at that time. See, he's still out there, though. We'll get it right back. So what you like to do with these little 30-second ounce jigs is basically cast it as far as you can from the boat. It's going to only give you 25, 30 feet at the most. And then you want to count your depth here. Uh, basically, these little tiny jigs will sink about one foot per second. And about 12, 13 seconds right now. So I'll just go ahead and count it out here. 14, 15. So I figure I'm at 15 feet right now. Double check my drag there. Make sure, because when you set the hook on these fish, you want to make sure everything's just right. And you just want a slow little twitch. Slow little twitch. Make it bounce. Make it dance, as I would say. And then hopefully a trout's down there and sees it, or a bass, or a bluegill, or a crappie, and they kind of sees it, and they look at it and say, ooh, easy meal. I think I'll eat that. And we'll just keep working it, working it, keep working it. You can even pick up the speeds a little bit, slow it down, let it drop, come back with it, pick it back up, and do your dance with it, what I like to do. And then, God willing, we'll have some fish. <laughs> Okie doke.